Morning, Charmaine. Hey, hello, Edmund. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for meeting me. No problem. I see you have been fixing stuff. Yes, I brought some presents for you today. Thank you. <laughs> so, what are the problems? Yeah, so I've been having some mechanical issues with my um, appliances. Okay. And I really, really need your help. No problem. Yeah. What's the problem with the fan? Um, I think the thing is jammed. Uh, I can't seem to get it to spin. Ah, yeah. things is jammed. Uh, things basically is a mechanical issue. Okay. Right, and my toaster oven, right, there's a creaking sound when I open and close. Okay. And there's corrosion over here. Okay. I'm not sure if it's toxic to the food I make. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, this one is another mechanical issue. We'll okay. look at it later. Okay. Yeah. So before we start repair in repair good them, normally what do we do? I know. Safety. Yeah, safety. Mm. So I guess we are talking about the uh, loops and solvent that mm. led to chemical safety. Right. When I think of chemicals, I think of um, nail polish and hand sanitizer. But I don't exactly think of safety when I use those. But I think uh, most consumer chemicals are mildly dangerous. Lah. Oh, okay. Oh, what kind of problems may arise? Oh, basically, uh, like extender ingestion, mm -hmm. inhale of the film, and also like uh, eye contact. These are some of them. And also when you use grease into the oven, and after you bake, it will go into the food. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I thought you meant like drinking the, the chemicals. Well, nobody will knowingly drink poison, right? Right, right. But there are so many types of chemicals. How do we know? Well, uh, best is to read the warning that come with the chemicals. Mm. But if there isn't one, uh, like thinner and aston, mm. then we can check it online. So for the chemicals that we're using today, do we have to wear any PPE? Well, uh, basically it's optional uh, because uh, these are really a mild uh, kind of uh, solvent and it all depends on individual, I mean, like somebody allergic to uh, peanuts, mm. depends on how long is the exposure you're exposed to the chemical. Uh, so it depends on me and the chemical. Yeah, then right. you can actually wear a protective gloves if you want. Oh, but those are so inconvenient. It's a short while, I mean, probably you just uh, wash it off with water. We need to prepare a place to repair for the chemicals. Oh, prepare? Yeah, we need a spill barrel to capture the spill and also to absorb the chemicals also. Like this paper. Oh, wow. Sounds like a lot of work just to fix something. So, uh, in Repair Cupid Tem, we use a lot of uh, WT-40 uh, mm -hmm. products. Here are some of the loops and solvent that Repair Cupid Tem uses very frequently. We are very lucky they have agreed to sponsor this episode. Wow, I thought WD-40 is just WD-40. You mean uh, this WD-40? Uh, it does not seem like the one I have at home though. Many versions of WD-40 like body straw and this easy reach, while others are for various purposes. The multi-use is by far the most popular product and it is my go-to product for multi-users. Maybe it's better if you show me the different uses of the different chemicals through the repairs. Before we start the repair, there are two kinds of uh, chemicals. One is the solvent, the other one is the lubricants. So the solvent basically are solving problems by dissolving the solute and the lubricants are basically to lessen the friction. Uh, so shall we start with my jam fan? So we'll be using the WD-40 smart straw. The smart straw allows me to focus on the uh, moving part would that fix the problem? Well, uh, it depends on the extent of the uh, jam. Mm. So we need to soak it for a while and uh, let it wait for a few minutes. Mm. It doesn't matter if um, we soak it for a longer time, right? The chemical won't damage the motor? Uh, basically, uh, solvent uh, won't, don't corrode the metals. Uh. So you're saying this oven is squeezing? Yes. Maybe it's because I sprayed WD-40 and the straw attachment was very easy to use. I see. Mm. However, I think this uh, multi-use straw would be a better use. Oh. So when you spray with it, then later you clean it with soap and water or vinegar. Ah, okay. Can you show me how it's done? Sure. But since we are in contact with this chemical for a long duration, it's best that we use to wear a protective glove. Okay. Let me take out this tray. 
So clean here, take this, put the spray, some the loops, and then use the brush. Mm -hmm. And you just need to brush off the thing. Mm -hmm. You want to try? Okay. That was easy, right? Actually, it was easier than I thought. I just never thought that we could use this for to clean up badly rusted parts. Well, uh, we spray on it and clean it with soap or vinegar later. Ooh. So now we take a look at the fan. Okay. Rotate smoothly. Oh, it's moving. Yeah, but we can do smoother than that. Uh, will spray more WD-40 multi-use help? Uh, nope. We will use the uh, drill to do the job. Won't that spoil the motor? Uh, no, it won't. It will loosen the shaft only. Okay. Now we can spin freely. Mm. What else can we do to make it better? Well, we can use the 3 in 1 multi purpose oil, or we can use the white lithium grease. Ooh. This is the uh, non drip formula with uh, heat resistant property. So it gives a protective coating on the shaft for long-lasting use. Well, the fan is still a bit slow, but it's better than it being stuck. It's a matter of uh, getting the loops to make the moving part go smooth. Lah. So if our hinges right, make the creaking sounds, we can also use white lithium to ensure longer protection? We still have to use the multi-use smart straw because the white lithium do not release the friction. Ah, okay. Thank you so much, Ed. I learned so much today. Welcome. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I brought some items to show you if you have the time. Yeah, sure. Whoa. We're going to fix all this. Yeah, since we have learning the uh, lubricants and this uh, solvent, so these are some items to show you some application. So this one is the uh, cutter. I've uh, been left outside for two weeks. This is after two weeks. You see, after using the uh, WD-40 multi-use, and now you see it's working as new. We have this uh, remote control, we are take out and uh, we just need to use the uh, WD-40 contact spray and this we need to spray on, onto the contact. Why do contacts like these fail? Well, basically uh, due to battery leakage and uh, second is due to dust that is accumulated inside and lastly is because of corrosion. Let me show you some common problems that can be fixed at home. Oh, the haunted door sounds. Ah, yes. So this can be solved by using the WD-40 multi-use. Mm -hmm. Or you can use the easy reach to reach for higher places. Right. So today we learned about how solvents and lubrication works hand in hand to solve jams yes. and keep your moving parts working well mm. and wear down slower. Right. So remember to learn more about how to protect your stuff. Thank you so much, Edna, for your sharing today. I'm very happy to. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Shamin, and stay tuned for another episode of Repairs with Repair Kopitiam. <laughs>